Hello friends, I'm Johan Gladson and welcome back to my channel Joe's Learn. Today, I'm going to explain about the solar system. So let's dive in and find the answer. Do you know how the sun and the planets were formed? Well, let me answer that question. 4,500 million years ago, a large dark cloud of gas and solid grains of dust condensed to form stars. The sun was one of these stars. It had a disk of some material with 11 non-light emitting bodies in it. This disk was revolving around the sun. Later, these 11 non-light emitting bodies took off the disk and shot away. But the sun's gravity did not let them be all free. So they began to revolve around the sun along fixed paths known as orbits. As for the distance, each of the 11 non-light emitting bodies was at a different distance from the sun. Trivial time! Did you know that the sun has been losing its energy in the form of heat and light? And due to this, it has been through nearly half its life and it has only energy to keep it shining steadily for another 5000 million years. So, these 11 non-light emitting bodies were named as planets by ancient Greek astronomers. So, all of these planets had, has been given a name. They were named as Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune and the remaining three planets were named as the dwarf planets and they were named as Pluto, Eris and Ceres. Trivia time! Did you know that the word planet has been derived from the Greek word Planetes, P-L-A-N-E-T-E-S, which means wanderers. Seven of these planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus are bright enough to be seen with the naked eye. While the remaining four planets, Neptune and the three dwarf planets, Pluto, Eris and Ceres, can only be seen through a telescope. Also, there are millions of other smaller bodies in space. They are the moons, asteroids, comets, meteors and meteorites. All these smaller and bigger bodies make up the entire sun's family. The entire solar family and the sun itself make up the solar system. Whereas the sun is a medium-sized shining star, the planets are non-shining opaque bodies which only reflect the light given by the sun. Trivia time! Did you know that for 186 days you cannot see the sun in the North Pole? Different theories on how the solar system originated began to appear. Now let us look at two of these theories. Monistic theory. This theory is based on the belief that the solar system originated from a thin flat cloud known as the solar nebula. The scientists supporting this theory are divided in their opinions on whether the solar system originated all at once or slowly. Dualistic theory. This theory is based on the belief that the solar system originated when a large star-like object passed by the sun. It was having lots of gravity and it had more gravity than that of the sun. So it pulled off a long streak of gas from the sun. It was from this streak of gas that the planets came to be formed. This theory was first put forward during the 1780s. But since the mid-19s, newer facts have been discovered by scientists. And now it is believed that the Milky Way, our galaxy in which we live in, is at least twice as old as the solar system. Study of the solar system is going on. And when we get new facts about the solar system, 
that facts will add to our knowledge about the sun and all the planets and the entire solar system as well. These planets have been categorized into three groups. Okay, so now the first group is named as the terrestrial planets. The planets in this category are Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. The second category is known as the major planets. The planets in this category are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. The third and last category is known as the dwarf planets. And the planets in this category are Pluto, Eris and Ceres. Most of the planets have smaller, non-shining bodies revolving around them. These non-shining bodies are known as moons or satellites. Our Earth has only one moon. The moon of our Earth gets sunlight from the sun and reflects it back into space. Most of the sunshine is absorbed by the moon. Therefore, the moonshine is cool and soothing. This is true in the case of all the moons of the other planets. When we look up at the sky, we can see that all the planets and stars appear to be moving eastwards across the sky. All the planets spin like a top and at the same time revolve around the sun. The following three laws govern the planetary motion. Each planet spins like a top round its axis which is an imaginary line through the center of the planet. This motion is called rotation. All the planets rotate in a tilted position. At the same time, the planets also revolve around the sun along fixed paths known as orbits which are oval in shape. Therefore, if the planets at one point is closer to the sun at any other point on the orbit. This motion is called revolution. The rotation of planets causes days and nights on it. This is because only one half of a planet faces the sun and therefore this half receives sunlight and has day, while the other half is in starlit darkness. This tilt causes the days and nights to be of unequal duration because the tilt causes the northern or southern half of a planet to be lit for a longer time span when it is tilted towards the sun. This leads to a hot season when the northern or southern half of a planet is tilted towards the sun and to a cold season when it is tilted away from the sun. But two moderate seasons occur when the tilt has no effect on the distance from the sun. These moderate seasons occur twice during one round of revolution, when the hot season changes into the cold season and when the cold season changes into the hot season. We all know that all the planets are of a different size than the rest of the planets. So, due to this, the period of rotation are bound to be different. And due to this, the length of days and nights cannot but differ too. The period of revolution will also differ because all the planets are at a different distance from the sun. All the planets also vary in temperatures. And so the planets which are closer to the sun will have a hotter temperature than that of those which are farther away from the sun. None of these temperatures are livable at all. The temperature of our planet, the Earth, is between the livable ranges. It is believed that all the planets have mountains, flat areas and craters. It is indeed shaped by its weather and atmosphere. The atmosphere means the gases that surround a planet. The atmosphere of the four terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, 
are believed to chiefly consist of nitrogen and carbon dioxide, while the atmosphere of the four major planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, are believed to chiefly consist of hydrogen and helium. But the atmosphere of our planet, the Earth, is known to have a large amount of oxygen and water vapor which has made life possible on it. Now in my next video, I will be talking about the planets. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't subscribe my channel, please subscribe now and also enable the bell icon to get notifications on all my latest videos. Bye friends, thank you for watching. And stay tuned for more interesting and amazing videos in Joe's Learning.